President Obama dismisses General Stanley A. McChrystal. President Obama on Wednesday fired his top Afghanistan war commander after only a brief meeting in the Oval Office, replacing General Stanley A. McChrystal with his boss and mentor, General David H. Petraeus, and sending a clear signal that the current war strategy will continue despite setbacks and growing public doubts. Two hours later, an angry Mr. Obama privately reprimanded members of his bickering national security team, adopting a stern tone during a meeting in the Situation Room and ordering them to put aside pettiness and not to put personalities or reputation ahead of American troops who have been put in harm's way, administration officials said. Speaking in the Rose Garden to reporters, Mr. Obama said he did not fire General McChrystal for critical comments about him and his staff in Rolling Stone magazine, nor out of any sense of personal insult. Rather, the President cited the need for his team to unite in pressing the war effort. I don't think we can sustain that unity of effort and achieve our objectives in Afghanistan without making this change, he said. Generals have come and gone in disputes over policy and execution. Indeed, Defense Secretary Robert M. Gates fired General McChrystal's predecessor, General David D. McKernan, just a year ago. But the removal of General McChrystal culminated a remarkable public waiting game with White House and top military officials trying to guess what the President would do. And Mr. Obama keeping his cards close to his vest until the very end. While publicly rebuking him Tuesday, Mr. Obama had said he would not decide the general's fate until they met face to face. But as early as Monday night, officials said, when Mr. Obama first learned of the Rolling Stone article in which General McChrystal and his staff criticized administration officials the President and his advisors were discussing the likelihood that the General would have to go. A lot of us were arguing that the message of letting McChrystal's comments roll off our backs would be enormously harmful, one administration official said. By Tuesday, when the President met with the General's biggest supporter and a powerful one, Secretary Gates, White House and Pentagon officials were already discussing General Petraeus as a most likely replacement. It has been nearly 60 years since President Harry S. Truman fired General Douglas MacArthur in the midst of the Korean War. The last time a president directly stepped in to remove the senior commander in a war zone for disrespect toward the White House. For Mr. Obama this was a MacArthur moment, a reassertion of civilian control, so they say. The President also used the moment to emphasize that the policy in Afghanistan would not change, even as his own party and international allies display strong doubts about the way forward, including whether the United States can ever navigate a troubled relationship with Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai. General Petraeus is taking a step down. As head of United States Central Command, he has oversight for Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, and the entire region. He has supported General McChrystal's point of view during internal administration strategy debates. His appointment is meant in part to calm the nerves of NATO allies and Mr. Karzai. Mr. Obama called Mr. Karzai Wednesday to try to get the Afghan president on board. Mr. Karzai made a personal appeal to Mr. Obama on Tuesday night to keep General McChrystal. And Mr. Obama received at least an initial 
public statement that President Karzai respects President Obama's decision. General James L. Jones, the National Security Advisor, whom one of General McChrystal's aides had dismissed in the article as a clown, called his counterparts in Europe to assure them that Mr. Obama was not abandoning his approach. He repeated Mr. Obama's line that this was a change in personnel, not in policy. General Petraeus will have to relinquish the top job at Central Command to assume command in Afghanistan. White House officials said no decision had been made on who would succeed him. One senior administration official noted that General McChrystal and Mr. Karzai just came off the most constructive week we've had in a while with Karzai when the two men traveled through Kandahar. General McChrystal reported back that Mr. Karzai finally seemed deeply engaged in the details of the effort to regain control over the sprawling city, one of the Taliban's home bases. General Petraeus will now be responsible for executing the Kandahar Offensive and to the spiritual heart of the Taliban. White House and Congressional officials say they expect he will be confirmed quickly, probably by the end of next week. In the Rolling Stone article, General McChrystal and his aides belittled many of their civilian counterparts on the Afghanistan strategy team. In a typical response from other military officials, one army officer with multiple tours in Afghanistan expressed anger at the lack of discipline displayed by General McChrystal and his inner circle. But he warned that it was symptomatic of wider problems with Mr. Obama's strategy and among his national security advisors. They brought this upon themselves and embarrassed the entire military as an institution. Hopefully, the President uses this as an opportunity to refine his policy and objectives and also to shuffle the rest of his AFPAC team as well. McChrystal isn't the only one who probably needs to move elsewhere. Major criticism of the United States strategy is that, it, that its success relies on support from an Afghan government that so far has been unwilling or unable to exert control and eliminate widespread corruption. And some call Afghanistan the graveyard of empires. There must be a reason for that. And again, there's something much more going on here. Something much bigger. Everything is connected. And everything is numbered. Luke chapter 12 verse 35 Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. 36 And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks they may open unto him immediately. 37 Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he comes shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall prepare himself and make them to sit down to eat and will come forth and serve them. 38 and if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. 39. And this know, that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken into. 40. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. And again, there are many different types of signs happening daily all around the world.